A very good evening, everyone. Welcome to our YouTube channel. So, as we continue with the series called Drug of the Day, our today's drug is doxorubicin. So, let's get started. Doxorubicin, as you can see, belongs to the class of an anti-cancer drug, that is cytotoxic drugs. We have various classes here. We are already done with Vinca alkaloids. Okay. Now we'll be studying about the antibiotics. Okay, so the ones which are anti-cancer antibiotics, in that a drug of the day is doxorubicin. So we'll be studying about these doxorubicin, donorubicin, idarubicin, all these rubicins. Okay, so let's get started. Doxorubicin and donorubicin. Now, uh, here we have to remember its class. So yes, it is an anthracycline antibiotics. We have to remember the class anthracycline. Why? Because they have this anthracycline nucleus in them. Okay, we'll see when we'll go through their structure. Okay, they have the anti-tumor activity. It is the ring is planar oxidized anthracycline nucleus, which is fused to this ring connected to an amino sugar by glycosidic bond. Here I will explain. So this here we have this anthracycline ring. Then we have this cyclohexane, as they have mentioned, fused to a cyclohexane ring, connected to an amino sugar. So yes, this is an amino sugar part via a glycosidic bond. So this bond here is a glycosidic bond. So I hope you understand anthracycline nucleus fused to a cyclohexane ring and attached to the amino sugar via glycosidic bond. I hope you are, you are cleared with the structure of anthracycline antibiotics. Coming on to the metabolism part, it involves the reduction of C13 ketone to yield the doxorubicinol, which is active compound. So first question they can ask is, which is the active compound of doxorubicin? So yes, it is doxorubicinol. Next they can ask is that in on which carbon or what is involved in the metabolism? of doxorubicin. So it is the conversion of this ketone to alcohol. So this is the C13 ketone, if you see. So this ketone is a C13 ketone. This is carbon-13 ketone, which is involved to convert it into active metabolite along with the cleavage of the amino sugar to give the glycone. So here also this amino sugar will be cleaved and you will get the active metabolite. So remember two things for conversion into active metabolite. First is the conversion of ketone to alcohol that is on C13 carbon. And next is this breaking of this amino sugar. Okay, so I hope you have understood the structure of metabolism part. Let's go ahead, the mechanism of action. Very important. So yes, because it is anti-cancer drug, it is mutagenic and it has this carcinogenic potential as well. Okay, so even if it is anti-cancer, it has the potential. Okay, coming on to the next part, the mechanism of action. It will intercalate between the DNA strands. Matlab, ye DNA strands mein ja ke pe, it will place itself in the DNA strands or you block karega DNA synthesis as well as RNA synthesis. Or agar DNA ni banega, RNA ni banega, to protein synthesis is also blocked. That's how it is going to ultimately affect. Okay, coming on to the next part, they are also capable of causing breaks in DNA strands. So DNA strands will not just go, they will get embedded in DNA, but also they'll cause the breaks in DNA by activating the topoisomerase 2 enzyme and generating these radicals, which are quinone type free radicals. What we have to remember, topoisomerase 1 and 2 ka beech ka difference, I hope we know. Topoisomerase 1 is the one jo DNA ko relax karega. Along with it will remove the supercoil, it will cut only the one of the strands of DNA and it will join. Okay, so topo isomerase 1 is only responsible for cutting the one of the strands of DNA, whereas topo isomerase 2 is the one that will cut both the strands of DNA simultaneously. Okay, that's the difference. And that's how it will activate this enzyme topo isomerase 2 and will generate this quinone type 3 radicals. Okay. Coming on to the next part, they also inhibit the polymerase activity. You, if you see the mechanism of action, there is multiple 
things in the world and its mechanism. It is acting on multiple pathways. It is also inhibiting the polymerase enzyme, okay, which affect the regulation of gene expression, again, producing the free radical and damage to DNA. So it is basically going to affect your DNA and thus kill the cancerous cells. Coming on to the next, the maximum action is exerted at the S phase, but the toxicity is usually exhibited in G2 phase. So action will be at the S phase, as we have seen, it is going to affect the DNA synthesis, but toxicity you will see in the G2 phase. So what all we got to remember from this mechanism of action? So yes, we have to remember that they intercalate between the DNA, they block the DNA, RNA, and protein synthesis. They also activate the topoisomerase 2, generating immune type free radicals, also inhibit the polymerase activity, and that's how producing a free radical damage to DNA. The mechanism of action is important. Okay, coming on to the next part, ADR. Very, very important, more than the mechanism of action. The ADR, very commonly seen, it's cardiotoxicity. It will cause the ECG changes, arrhythmias, hypertension, all things related to cardiac system. Congestive heart failure is very commonly seen in cardiomyopathies. Okay, so don't forget the ADR of doxorubicin and donorubicin as well. Same it goes for, okay, cardiotoxicity. Along with that, you will also find marrow depression, the bone marrow depression, which is mostly seen in all anti-cancer drugs, alopecia, loss of hairs, and other adverse effects. Urine may be colored red. So yes, this is also one a very different characteristic point, urine coloration red. Important for us is cardiotoxicity. So never forget this thing, the ADR. Coming on to the uses. So yes, it is used for treatment of various solid tumors, breast cancer, thyroid, ovary, bladder, lung cancer, neuroblastoma, while donor and idarupisin are used for leukemia. I hope we know leukemia, it's a blood cancer. So remember the uses of doxorubicin, which is for solid tumors, whereas donor and idarubicin is for blood cancer. Coming on to the next part, donorubicin is used for the treatment of non-lymphocytic and lymphocytic leukemia both. So if you see, they are mostly used for leukemia, whereas boxer is used for solid tumors, the main differentiating factor. Okay, coming on to the anthracycline antibiotic, this is the structure that we have already seen. This is doxorubicin, we already know this. This is the anthracycline nucleus, this is the cyclohexane ring fused to this amino sugar by this glycosidic bond. We all know this. This is about doxorubicin. What is the difference between doxa and donorubicin? If I see there is this only one difference, I can see that in donorubicin, I cannot see the OH here. There should have been OH here, but it is not present. So can I say that dono is the one which lacks the C14OH? This is the 14th carbon. So it lacks, this was the 13th carbon that we have seen in the metabolism part. This is a 14th carbon and lacks C14OH. Okay, so 14th OH group is absent in dono reducing. Coming on to the next part. So yes, we have to remember doxorubicin is isolated from the bacteria Streptomyces, Streptomyces pucetius, varcesius. So we have to remember this Streptomyces pucetius is the hydroxylated congener of doxorubicin. So the question could also be asked on this, dash is the hydroxylated congener of donorubicin. Okay, that is doxorubicin or even in a converse way, anything is possible. Okay, we have to also remember this. This is again the structural part. Now in doxo and don, if you see, you have this ninth, O9. So this is the ninth carbon. And O9 of this ring, anthracycline ring, is attached to the N2 and N3 of guanine. And that's how it will affect your DNA or get intercalated in your DNA. Okay, by attaching this O9, uh, the ninth, on the ninth carbon, if you have this O, which will get attached to this N2, N3 of guanine, and that's how it will affect your DNA. The amino sugar, very, very important. If the amino sugar is lacking, then they would be failed to inhibit the enzyme. Okay, so then topoisomerase won't be inhibited. So I hope you understood this. Doxyl is the product of doxorubicin. And not it's, a it's not just a simple product. It's a liposomal injection. 
Remember this. This is very commonly asked in NIPER exams, the liposomal preparations of doxorubicin. You have ambisome of amphotericin B, which was used in mucomycosis. Likewise, you have doxel, which is widely used. So yes, it is a encapsulated in the stealth liposomes. Stealth, why stealth? Because it allows to evade the detection and destruction by the immune system, which increases the likelihood of reaching the tumor. So yes, when you have the stealth liposomes, then your immune system won't be able to destruct this liposomal form and it will reach the tumor specifically and destroy it. It has a greater chance to reach the tumor tissue and improved pharmacokinetic profile with slower plasma clearance. That means its action, duration of action is also prolonged. Its pharmacokinetic profile increased biology is also improved. So that's the advantage of liposomal form and doxel is one of them. Okay, same thing. We have donoribicin the liposomal form. It is donoxone. This is the liposomal form of donoxone. If you see, you have an aqueous core, okay, containing the entrapped donoribicin citrate and then you have this liposomal phospholipid bilayer. So this is how donoxone and doxel are the two liposomal preparations. Coming on to the next part, MCQ part. So MCQ is a GPAT 2019 MCQ. What is the MCQ? The structural features present in the anti-cancer antibiotics. Okay, this is the first keyword, anti-cancer antibiotics. Doxorubicin, donorubicin, etarubicin, epirubicin. Structural features, remember this word, structural features. We have, we have seen it in most of the slides, structural features, Kathy. Coming on to the option. Phenanthrin nucleus fused to cyclohexane ring. Naphthalene nucleus connected with amino sugar. Anthracene nucleus fused to cyclohexane ring. Or is it quinoline nucleus connected with amino sugar? Of this, I'm very sure that it is an anthracycline antibiotic. Even if I don't know anything, I know it's an anthracycline. Or it is an anthracene nucleus it contains, right? Coming on to the next part, we have also studied it had cyclohexane ring connected with amino sugar, glycosidic linkage, everything is rest of all is same in every uh, option. Important is a, in this nucleus, the basic nucleus which is present in all these anti-cancer antibiotics. Remember, it is anthracin nucleus. Don't forget. Okay. So answer is anthracin nucleus. Okay. The structural features, the question was asked on the structural features of these anti-cancer drugs. Here is the basic explanation. We have seen of Dono and Doxo. Idaribusin, if you see in R1 and R2, it has this H. If you replace this by uh, H, then it becomes Idaribusin. You also have carbinomycin, which you don't have to do. Just remember of Idaribusin. And you have this uh, sugar, amino sugar, which is called as L-duanosamine. What is this called as? L-duanosamine. So yes, very commonly asked question. Don't forget the amino sugar also. Okay, coming on to the next MCQ. I have also told you this. Remember it carefully. Anti-malignancy drug, which is potentially cardiotoxic. Very commonly asked question on doxorubicin is its ADR. Okay, the ADR is very commonly asked. Is it bleomycin? Is it dacarbazine, doxorubicin, or is it fluorouracil? Okay, none of the drugs in the option are cardiotoxic except doxorubicin. Okay, so you have to remember it's ADR. Whenever it comes to cardiotoxicity and an anti cancer drug, it's doxorubicin. Which of the following anti cancer drug is not derived from plasma? A very, very different question altogether. Okay, very different question, not derived from plants. Let's come on to the option. Is it etinopian? Is it doxorubicin? Is it paclitaxel or is it etoposide? So the question is very, very different compared to uh, what we usually see, not derived from plants. Etinopian, paclitaxel, etoposide, all these are derived from plants. Whereas doxorubicin is not. Okay, so if you want to study them, we will be covering all these drugs in the further videos. We will be discussing the biological source, the cognosy part, everything. So stay tuned for that.
thank you so much for watching uh, so please do like share and subscribe share it with your friends and uh, also uh, you can follow us on instagram facebook linkedin please press the bell notification on so that you get a daily update on the all the videos being posted thank you for your time thank you so much